I'm gonna take this $25 toy, completely rework it to provide a full arcade experience, then I'll challenge a bunch of gamers to find out if I succeeded. This is Tiny Arcade's Dance Dance Revolution Mini Arcade. You can get it on Amazon for $25, and their advertising is a complete lie. These gameplay screenshots, well, they're from the 1998 arcade cabinet, showing two players, no less. So do you get the full arcade experience when you open it up? Uh, not exactly. What you get are three songs with a crunchy speaker, and that's it. Can't believe the company that brought us the Rick and Morty talking keychain dropped the ball on this one. So I want to transform this toy into the true DDR arcade experience. And here's my plan. We'll start with this Raspberry Pi 4, which is going to be the computer that runs everything. It's small, but it turns out some real arcade machines that you find at Dave & Buster's nowadays are actually running off of this thing. And it's hopefully just small enough to jam into the DDR toy. I also bought a one inch screen. That's right, a single inch to match the original. I also have this USB extender that will be flush with the top of the machine for when I need to plug anything in. As for the rest of the machine, I'm gonna keep that as close to the original toy as possible. With a mini amplifier, we can interface with the toy's crunchy speaker, and by hot wiring the original board, I'll be able to keep the original controls in all their flashy, clackety glory. I'll be installing a Raspberry Pi port of Stepmania a fan-made open source program that allows you to create your own custom version of DDR at home. I'll also write up a Python script to interface with the original buttons and LEDs, and I'll configure the Raspbian operating system to work with the audio and display. And that's it. Didn't really run into any issues. That's a lie. I'm a liar. The pie? Yeah, looks like it should fit. It wasn't even close. I trimmed every piece of plastic possible inside the toy, and since the GPIO pins were still sticking out, I had to trim those as well. And with this little of room to work with, I had to directly solder to the pins, and all of that led to this messy bird's nest of wires. I don't even know how I did this. And what did I get for all that effort? A case that doesn't even shut. That's it, I give up, good enough. But do you want to know what I could have done instead? Made a custom PCB board that used like three wires. And I could have had that custom PCB board printed by PCBWay. Yep, it's sponsor time. If you have any brilliant, or in my case, stupid, projects that you need PCBs for, PCBWay is offering your first prototype board for only $5. And if you're someone who's seen some cool 3D prints online but don't want to invest the time and energy into a 3D printer, PCBWay has you covered as well. So if you want to make your ideas a reality, check out the link in the description. <sighs> okay, now we get to talk about everyone's favorite subject, software issues. Getting the screen to work? Yeah, that took 20 YouTube tutorials and three days of trial and error. How about Step Mania? I had to go through like three different releases that wouldn't launch and finally found a version of Project Outfox that would have worked if my SD card didn't become faulty in the middle of the process. So I had to do everything over again, including all the screen hacks. And even then, to make it run correctly, I still had to overclock the CPU, which led me to have to add fans since it overheated, which led to even more wires. There's like 40 different issues I outlined in a Word document, but I'm just gonna skip over those because I value your time. And finally, making a program to interface with all the buttons and the lights. That actually wasn't too bad. Just reverse engineer the circuit board and use a little bit of Python and it just magically worked. Somehow. And at the end of the day, I did what I wanted to do. I hacked the arcade experience onto a $25 toy. But I wasn't done yet. To make it even more of an arcade experience, I printed out these finger shoes. Wow, what an improvement. For even more of an arcade experience, I can even plug in my metal DDR pad. You may not like it, but this is what peak gaming looks like. For less of an arcade experience, I also found a port of Friday Night Funkin' for the Pi, because I need some easy content to milk after all this work. 
I'm conflicted on this thing. On one hand, it's really cool to have the full arcade experience, smaller than the size of a shoe, but on the other hand, it's still a crappy toy that's held together by loose wires and a prayer. So was this project a success or a failure? I think we need to let gamers decide. But where could I find like a gathering of elite gamers to help me test this out? Well, I think it's about time I traveled to LTX. It's a gamer con. And here, gamers can game at a ridiculously large LAN party, throw PC gaming cases, game in a gaming trailer. I mean, this place is just filled with the most gamery gamers that game. Gamers! So to trick some gamers into test driving my mini machine, I set up a little competition, complete with this golden shoe trophy for the best score with finger shoes and this golden DDR trophy, which is bigger than my actual machine. And it has these removable posts with magnets because at this point, I pretty much have to use magnets in every project I do. I don't know, it's an unwritten rule. And the first person to come up to the plate, I'm gaming in here, is none other than John Baringa Studios. And he's the perfect candidate because he gamed on some pretty stupid devices in my time. The Trimble Yuma, the Leapster GS, and now the mini DDR machine. If, if I was the one who put this together and I knew the jank that's going on, I'd probably be cringing at something going wrong at any possible second. But this is great. This is fantastic. As an end user, I love this. You haven't seen the back yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, if you're enjoying yourself too much, maybe it's because you haven't tried on the shoes yet. I got two nines right there for you. There we go. Oh, that's perfect. Nope, heel strap. Nope, nope, no more heel strap. Wow. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you were right. You were right. 100%. I, nope, nope. I don't know if it's me or the game at this point. It's probably me. Or the game. Do you want to turn it around and see what it looks like? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you like how neat and clean it is? It's, oh, yeah. It, it's beautiful. Dude, cable managed everywhere. Every cord's the same color. It's, yep, it's wonderful. No, nope, no need to look in there. Don't film. Nope, it's great. <laughs> Fantastic. I love the whole thing, though. So, Bringus was pretty positive. Too positive. But I guess that makes sense coming from the man that turned a $7 laptop into a Steam Deck. I needed someone that would be a bit tougher, and I think I found him. This is Shank Mods, the mastermind behind the GameCube Joy-Cons, Hot Wheel PC, and countless gaming handhelds. And these projects are fine crafted to the most minute details. So what will he think about this device that's held together by loose wires in a prayer? I'm not very good at this. How do I change the difficulty? How do I set it to baby mode? Do you want to take a look at the back and the, all the jank okay. that's going on back there? So is it battery powered or is it, does it have a battery or is it just? USB-C powered. Okay, so if that comes out, the whole thing goes out. Okay, Correct. so I'll be very careful. So how, is this like a feature where it like folds up and stuff like that? No. Unfortunately not. It's more of a bug than a feature. Okay, hear me out. Buy two, stick them next to each other, near the screen to both. And then, Brian, player one and player two, so then you could have DDR battles on Now that's an idea. You're good at, like, actually, like, cut, drawing a line and finishing products, projects. <laughs> and you're good at making things actually professional. No, I'm good at taking a year to make So what would you rate the, the DDR pad? Obviously, this is not the ideal way to play DDR, but this is, like, the, the funny, one of the funniest ways to play DDR, which is, like, exactly what it was going for. So like, in terms of like the objective and execution, I would say excellent. Huh, well, that's not what I expected. Uh, let's see what some of the other competitors have to say. Wings, oh. get up here. No, they're not marshmallows. I want to hate it, but it kind of reminds me of something I would have bought from Target when I was like nine years right. old. Well, all right then. The buttons were hard to press, but you know, it's good. Um, first time playing DDR. What is this? If this was real DDR, I would have a much higher score than this and yours. The resolution's really small, but other than that, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and then I found Mike. 
Okay, I'll admit I don't know much about Mike, but he is really good at Step Mania on PC, and he absolutely crushed the competition. Not only with his fingers, but with the shoes on as well. And Mike easily took home gold in both categories. At this point, I was feeling pretty good. Dare I say, even a bit proud of what I had made. That was until a certain individual stopped by. Single graphics card. This is Linus Sebastian, commonly known as Linus Tech Tips, owner of the biggest tech media empire on YouTube. And LTX? Well, this is his convention. Little did I know he would be walking around roasting people setups for a video. What the heck is this? That is quite possibly the worst rear panel mod that I have ever seen. And when he walked over to me, you are aware, sir, that you know part of the point of DDR is the, uh, the the physical exertion and coordination. And in this moment, I thought you're gonna walk over to me and roast my mini DDR machine in front of one million people on the internet. You aware I'm gonna make a silly video out of this, right? Subscribe to Big Rig Creates. <laughs> he just did that. I sure did. No free rides, Mr. Tech Tips. Okay, but to answer the question, can you turn a toy into the full arcade experience? Well, yeah, just don't ask me to do it. Special thanks to my executive level patrons, Jameson Zabalos, Marco Carini, Evan Timmerman, Brendan Wolf, Pow Pow, Don Necco, Zebra Mang, and finally, Sally and Dave. 